Recently, I got a chance to talk with Dr. Scott Ackerman about a type of cancer that primarily affects women more than men. Here he is with more. It is the most common form of cancer in females, and doctors expect more than 52,000 new cases this year alone. We are talking about endometrial cancer. Dr. Scott Ackerman, one of the first coasts leading oncologists, he joins us every Friday to talk about the important issues. Today, he's trying to raise awareness about the elusive and potentially deadly disease. Okay, well, let's start off with, for those who might not know, what exactly is endometrial cancer? So, Casey, it's good to see you. Good to see you, too, <laughs> on this, yeah, talking about such a serious topic. But, you know, it's one of those things that may, people, and I'm one of them, did not know that much about. Right. So endometrial cancer is a cancer of the endometrium uh, or the inner lining of the uterus. This is what we call endometrial cancer. It's really the most common cancer of the female reproductive organ. Here's a picture of the endometrium of the uterus, and the endometrium is the upper part. This isn't to be, this isn't to be confused with cervical cancer. The cervix is the bottom part of the uh, uterus, and we typically see cervical cancer there. It's called, usually it's squamous cell cancer of the cervix. The endometrium, and you can see in the graphic here, the endometrial cancer usually is on the lining, the inner part of the uterus, and that's typically an adenocarcinoma. There's other ones as well, but the more common one is adenocarcinoma of the endometrium or of the lining of the uterus. There's really more than 52,000 cases a year in the United States, so it's not inconsequential. It's a very serious uh, disease. And risk factors are different for every type of cancer. What about endometrial cancer? What are some of the risk factors? Endometrial cancer has risk factors that are fairly similar to breast cancer risk factors. We've spoken before about breast cancer and, and people talk about breast cancer a lot more than they talk about endometrial cancer. But there's a lot of common risk factors and they're related to estrogen stimulation of the cells in the body. So if you have long-term uninterrupted estrogen stimulation of the uterus or of the breast or you know tissue in the body, but specifically for the uterus, um, this will cause a thickening of the uterine lining. So um, if you have a hormonal imbalance, if you have a uh, if you start menstruating at a young age and um, stop menstruating or go through menopause at an older age, that's a long-term estrogen stimulation of your of your uterus, and that would put you at higher risk for endometrial cancer. We also see it in women who are obese. They have a higher risk of endometrial cancer. Women that take estrogen medications, so uterine cancer typically, or is more common rather, in women who are postmenopausal, women who are in the 50s and 60s. And so a lot of those women take estrogen supplements once they go through menopause. These estrogen supplements would put a woman at higher risk for endometrial cancer. Also women who've never had a child or had their first child later in life. Again, this uninterrupted estrogen stimulation of the, of the uterus uh, could would put one at a higher risk for endometrial cancer. And women who have a family history of uh, endometrial cancer are at higher risk. There's something called Lynch syndrome that we've identified. It's a genetic disorder, similar to the BRCA testing we do for breast cancer. Lynch syndrome helps us identify uh, women who have a family uh, a predisposition to developing endometrial cancer. And these women who have this genetic um, um, mismatch have a 40 to 60 percent, depending on what study you read, higher risk of endometrial cancer. And I think I mentioned diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but if diabetics are four times more common than non-diabetics to have endometrial cancer. So are there any screening tests? I mean, is this, so you're shaking your head no, because no. I'm thinking when we go to the gynecologist, I mean, obviously there's something that they can screen for, apparently not. Apparently not, no. Nope. Um, you think so, but no, there's really no effective screening methods for endometrial cancer. The common misconception is that when you go to the gynecologist for your annual well woman check, you get a pap smear. And the pap smear is testing for cancer of the endometrium, but it's not, it's testing for cancer of the cervix. So the uterus has the endometrium and cervix. And when the doctor does, or the nurse, whoever does the pap smear, uh, they test typically the, the cervix and also the, the, the vagina and they test some cells here and look for dysplastic cells or cells that are malignant cells perhaps uh, involving the cervix but not the endometrium. But at that time the physician or practitioner normally does a pelvic examination and he or she may detect an abnormality in the uterus just by palpating the uterus. But you as a woman and all women should be aware of symptoms of endometrial cancer uh, so that they see their physician early on and get it taken care of. Symptoms such as 
pelvic pain, symptoms such as irregular or heavy menstrual bleeding, especially if, if you're postmenopausal having bleeding, or pain, or pain uh, after intercourse. Um, no screenings, which that doesn't make a lot of women <laughs> very uh, feel good. Um, but what can we do to reduce our risk, or is there anything that we can do to reduce our risk of getting this kind of cancer? Well, again, I mentioned obesity and diabetes sure. related okay. to high risk. So maintain a healthy weight. That'll help you reduce your risk for diabetes. Exercise regularly so you stay healthy as well. And also, some studies have shown that birth control you know, reduces your risk of endometrial cancer. And not just oral contraceptives, but also the IUD. People, women who use that also have a lower risk. All right. Dr. Eckerman, thank you so much, sir, for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks thank so much you, for Casey. coming on, Good as always, here. every Friday. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Dr. Ackerman regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you may have, you can connect with Dr. Ackerman on Facebook by visiting facebook.com forward slash First Coast Oncology.